Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This little mini Bible study is going to be on the September 23rd failed Bible prophecy. Now, where do people come up with this? I mean, do you know how many times people have said, you know, end of the world, uh, there were people in the times of Christ when he was walking the earth in human flesh, when God was in human flesh walking the earth, uh, they thought, well, the world's coming to an end. Uh, and then in around 1000 AD, there was also that. And then in the around the 1850s or so, there was the uh, Miller, I think it was the Millerites. But, uh, and then you've got the Jehovah's Witnesses. They've done it about six different times over the last hundred and something years. I remember when I was in high school, they were like, oh yeah, the world's going to end in 19, by 1976, the world's going to come to an end, Bob. Well, guess what? It didn't. So, September 23 comes and goes. Now look, just because somebody makes a prediction and it comes true, that doesn't mean squat. I could tell you, hey, tomorrow you're going to have a flat tire. And guess what? You uh, go out to your car and start to back up or whatever, or drive off, and you get a flat tire. And you say, wow, Bob was right. I got a flat tire. But then you look and, and somebody stuck a bunch of nails under your tires. Uh, is that a prophecy or what? No, it's just, you know. A prophecy is when you say, well, you know, there's going to be that volcano in Indonesia is going to blow up tomorrow and kill 2,000 people. Boom, volcano blows up in Indonesia, kills 2,000 people. The next day, that's a prophecy of the Lord. You know, because they can't, you can't, you can't fulfill that. Just because somebody says, oh, well, the economy is going to collapse at the end of the month. Uh, I'm telling you, the banks... In America and Europe and everything, they have the capability of creating a depression. They have the ability to destroy the stock market because we don't have a godly economy. A godly economy would be silver and gold. We don't have that. We got paper. So, all right. So let's take a look at something. In Matthew 24, um, well, let's take a look. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the temples, the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Next time the Jews tell you the wailing wall is part of the temple, they're calling Jesus a liar. Just remember that. Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So either Jesus is a liar or the Jews are liars. Take your pick. I pick Jesus as telling the truth. Verse 3. And as he, Jesus, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And he says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, you know, if Jesus warns you there's going to be famines, that's a good idea. Believers should put away some food, right? And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. What just happened in Mexico City? Earthquake, right? Pestilences, that's disease. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. This is coming to pass, people. 
Jesus Christ is getting to be the most hated name on the planet. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. September 23rd, false prophets. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Then let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not uh, was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. In so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. What's it going to look like when Christ comes? For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after, after, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. It's going to be pretty hard to fake that. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Let's skip now. Verse 33. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors, Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus said, my words shall not pass away. So when people tell you that the originals, oh, we don't have any originals of Jesus' words. So we don't, we think the words of Jesus passed away. Um, James White, I don't think so. But listen to this. But of that day, what day? The, the coming of the Christ. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You see, they ask Christ, what's it going to be like at the end of the world? He says, no man knows. Not even the angels in heaven. Only God the Father knows the day that he's going to return. So who are these deceivers that tell you September 23rd is the end of the world? Ooh. Here's another excellent one. Mark 13, 32. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son. Jesus says he doesn't even know the day. Neither the Son, but the Father. So, Jesus doesn't know, the angels in heaven don't know, and I'll guarantee you the angels that are not in heaven most certainly do not know. Only God the Father knows. There's no man on earth that knows the second day of the second coming. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. So, when you got all these people running around laying out false prophecies, what is the solution? Well, let's take a look. God had a solution to this problem. 
Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13 has an interesting thing. It says, well, let's take a look at the entire chapter here. Well, not the entire chapter, so. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet, uh, that's what September 23rd people were proclaiming themselves as, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not, not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Uh, and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. You see, a false prophet should be put to death. And I'll guarantee you the Jehovah's Witnesses, if they knew the, the top people that that put out the false prophecy about 1976, if they knew that it, when it, it didn't happen, that they were going to die, uh, you know, and there, there should be... God wants a theocracy on this earth. You see, there, are, there were two sets of laws. There were the Levitical laws, which were the laws of blood sacrifice, the killing of goats and bulls, that was fulfilled in Christ on the cross, his, by the shedding of his blood. And then there were the laws of the civil government, the king. You know, witches and Satanists should be put to death, and sodomites should be put to death, and false prophets should be put to death. And I tell you what, if people knew that they were going to die if their prophecies failed, uh, they would keep their mouths shut for the most part. Uh, how about Deuteronomy 18, verse 20? But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So, I'm, you know, I'm just curious, how do these people think they know more than Jesus. If Jesus doesn't even know the day and the hour that he's going to come back, how do they know more than he does? They don't. So, you know, but but just because somebody says, oh, the economy is going to collapse on October 31st, 2017. Well, the banks can pull the plug and the economy could collapse. That doesn't mean, you know, nothing. But if somebody says, well, there's going to be a meteorite hit New York City on October 31st, flaming meteor flying out of the sky and hits Central Park or Times Square or whatever. Now, if that happens, something that man has no control over, mm, yeah. But I'll tell you what, if somebody does that and they're not talking about repentance, they're probably a false prophet. So... Oh, it's become a dirty word. Repentance is a dirty word. But I tell you what, that's a word that God loves. These are the words of, I think the Lord wants to hear more than anything. Psalms 41, 4, 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Now, just saying that you've sinned in and of itself means nothing. We're going to read Luke chapter 15. Uh, you know what? Let's read this whole chapter. 
Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Uh, I mean, the re Republicans, right? I'm sorry, no, publicans. If you don't know what a publican is, that was a tax collector, a Roman tax collector. And the Pharisees, that, those were the Jews, and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So the Jews are like saying, oh, this guy, he hangs out with sinners. You know, birds of a feather flock together. And verse 3, and he, Jesus, and he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which was lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that believeth on me? No. Over one sinner that repenteth. More than 99 just persons who need no repentance. You notice that? It says, sinner that repenteth. Repenting of what? Their unbelief? No. Their sin. If you don't repent, and if you're not sorry about your sin, what's your, what is God going to save you from? Your wickedness? No. Your unbelief? You know, think about it. It says, a sinner that repenteth. Uh, more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that believeth? No. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. A sinner that repenteth. There's a big thing nowadays saying, oh, sinners don't have to repent. They just got to believe in Jesus. Well, guess what? Satan is a sinner and he doesn't repent of his wickedness. And he believes. You better believe that Satan believes. Satan absolutely believes in God. If you don't believe that, read Romans, I'm sorry, James chapter 1. Verse 11, And he, Jesus, and he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. He asked for his inheritance early. That's what happened. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. That's right. Eat, drink, and be merry. Wine, women, and song. Uh, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And would he fain have swilled, filled his belly with a hus that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, in other words, when he came to his senses, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned. Father, I have sinned. Did he say, Father, I had unbelief? No. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And that, people, is repentance. Verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight 
and in no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Now let me tell you people, these two sons, this son that went and played with the harlots but came back, to me, I believe this represents northern Israel. Whereas the other son that didn't leave the father represents Judah. So, verse 22, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. Read Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. God divorced northern Israel. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. This reminds me of Judah. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of, his, one of the servants and asked what these things meant. What in the world is going on? There's singing and dancing. Uh, there's noise. What's going on? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends." You, you didn't let me have a, a you know, a, a kill a calf so that I could have a, a party and eat and have fun like you're doing. This guy went off and, and spent all his money on whores and drinking and, and, and he comes home after he wastes everything and, 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 and you have a party for him. Me, I'm out in the field working my behind off. And you never did this for me, you know? And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many of the years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, that's, that's a whore, thou hast kid, killed for him the fatted calf. And he, the father, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy father was dead and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. You know, as a father that has two daughters, I tell you what, if there were two kids and this father asked me, well, you know, maybe one of my sons could marry one of your daughters. If I was thinking about it, I'd be wanting the, the older son. You know, the one that didn't run off and got drunk and played around with all the whores. I'd want the one, you know, that stayed with his father and worked and, and you know, was faithful. But he lacks something here. Forgiveness. I mean, forgiveness is extremely important. After all, let's, in, um, well, let's take a look. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms, that's charity, that you do not your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as do as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. Did you know that there's hypocrites in the synagogues? There's also hypocrites in the churches too, but I, you know, Jesus didn't say that, you know. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, 
Let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which hath seen, which seeth in secret shall himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues. There's those synagogues again. And in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the Catholics do. I'm sorry. Um, Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Oh, I'm sorry. But when thou, uh, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Listen carefully. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You see, the older son of the prodigal son, he should have forgiven his, bro his brother like the father did, his father did. But he didn't. Do you realize that if you don't forgive people for the little stuff in God's eyes, anyways, the little stuff that they do unto us that God the Father won't forgive us for the big stuff that we did unto him. Now, I'm not, you know, there are certain things like, you know, if somebody rapes your child and kills them, ah, oh boy, that's, that's tough. But I tell you what, the penalty was still, uh, murderers were supposed to be put to death. And you will find... When uh, Christ comes back in his kingdom and he rules with a rod of iron, they're not going to be saying, oh, well, though, you know, those were Old Testament laws and they were nailed to the cross. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I tell you what, you blaspheme Christ when he's on his throne. Don't be surprised when that person is immediately thrown into the lake of fire. Don't be surprised. I'm not saying it It absolutely be positively happen, but I believe it shall be you know what god wanted his government laws to be put to the test god wants sodomites and and witchcraft and sorcerers to be put to death he doesn't want them becoming elementary school teachers teaching your children evolution and witchcraft and blasphemy against god they, they just you know and you wonder why the earth is in the mess it is? And, and, and then the churches tell you, oh, well, those were nailed to the cross. They, they're not in force anymore. And, but don't worry, you're not going to be here because the pre-trib rapture and you're going to fly away. And we're going to be sitting on a cloud and playing harps and singing. Uh, I don't think so. You know why God sent Babylon and Assyria and the New World Order? You know why? The kingdom of the coming Antichrist beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition? Because you don't want Christ as king. And every king has a kingdom. And every kingdom has laws. And the churches don't want God's laws. Murderers were to be put to death. Not, not be given 
you know, oh, well, you know, the, the police officer forgot to read him his rights, so we're going to let him out and let him go and murder again and again and again and again. No, that's not how it works. God wanted evil be, to be put away, uh, not in a prison. There shouldn't even be prisons, people. Prisons will not exist under God's law. So uh, it's just the way it is. But you got to realize something. Most churches are actually state-created businesses with the name church in it. And that's why they teach the state's rules, not God's rules. And it's because you, most people don't want God's governmental laws. It's why the world's in the mess that it's in today. You wouldn't have people arguing over sodomite marriages, sodomites adopting children. I don't want sodomites adopting little boys. I don't want that. I think it's disgusting. God has a solution. And he gave you the example in Sodom and Gomorrah. But that's just my opinion. All right, well... And you know what? Because you don't want God's government laws, he's going to let you have Satan's God rules and laws and the coming new world order as the secular way. Uh, it's known as the um, mystery Babylon, the kingdom of the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist. You don't want God? God's government? Well, you could have the other guy and see how you like it. And if you don't believe me, read Jeremiah, read Ezekiel, read the book of Judges. Oh, Chaplain Bob, those are all Old Testament. We, we don't believe in that stuff. We're New Testament Christians. Well, that's fine. But uh, what can I tell you? All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen.